Do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. So I wanted to do a new video today, not a tutorial per se, but just a little bit of my personal experience using the SATA adapter finally for the official Sony PS2 network adapter. So my story is real quick was I always wanted to do the mod, if you call it a mod, I suppose, but I didn't want to purchase a Chinese or foreign uh, adapter that has no network connectivity, it has a SATA interface, but then you have like some game issues is what I've heard and read online. So I decided since I have the official Sony adapter, let's swap it out from the ID interface to the SATA interface and uh, have a lot of good time. So it was pretty simple to do. It took me about 10, 15 minutes. I don't have any footage of me doing that. To be honest, there's a lot of tutorials and footage of that online, but you do get um, instruction booklet. It does come with some hardware, so basically some screws, some spacers. I won't go through all the instructions too much, but the bottom line is you basically take off the old shield, take out all the, the old hardware, um, take out the old circuit board, put the new circuit board in, connect the ribbon cables, and connect the power cable accordingly, put everything back together, and then life is good. And then of course you want to make sure that whatever your hard drive is going to use, so in this case I want to use um, this SSD. So um, I also printed, totally optional, this 3D bracket. You don't have to. Some people went old school use nothing, use some cardboard, use some paper, just to give the hard drive a little bit of support because what happens is when you have this, let's say for example, this kind of form factor installed to your network adapter, that it's gonna be sort of, you know, levitating in the air a little bit. There's no support underneath it. So that's what the 3D bracket does for me. And of course, you don't wanna use SSD, you can use, you know, one of these, you know, like a laptop hard drive, or you can use a bigger hard drive too, you know, all SATA interface. So. I thought it'd be cool, sort of fun to use SSD only because one, there's no moving parts and it's quiet and it should be cooler too as well. So what I'm going to do is install this in the PS2. So let me put in my bracket. Maybe later on I'll add some screws for the SATA hard drive to connect to the bracket and then insert there and then let's turn it on. So install your games. There's a lot of different methods. I use the HDL Batch Installer, WinHip. There's other programs out there too that you can use. So maybe that's going to be another future updated tutorial. And then everything works out pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do is just real quick go into OPL. I do have some games installed. Just want to showcase uh, it's just working fine. I think the hard drive solution is a great solution. You're going to have an all-in-one to store all your PS2 games. If you wish, you can use PS1 games using Pop Starter. You can store your game ROMs. So like for your old school emulators like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, you can install those homebrew emulators, the ALF files, and go that way. Um... It's a much quicker experience in terms of loading your games. So I don't expect any lag or music issues or video issues, those kind of things. So if you have a fat PS2, you want to breathe a little bit of new life into it, I think the internal hard drive method is definitely the way to go. That way you can preserve your laser. Um, it's faster than um, using the memory card solution like MX4 SIO or over USB for sure. So anyways, that is today's video uh, experience. If you guys have any questions about this particular mod, where to get the files, um, the hardware, all that kind of stuff, let me know. Otherwise, um, leave a comment on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.